Ken Friedman, and I'm happy to be here tonight in Vilnius, Lithuania, at the Jonas Mekas Art Center. Um, Jonas Mekas Visual Art Center. I, of course, I'm actually not here. I'm sitting in my home in Kalmar, Sweden, across the Baltic, because with the pandemic, I can't travel. But I have been to see the center, and it was a great, great pleasure, and a tremendous pleasure for me to show the exhibition 92 events in Vilnius. These events began um, 64 years ago when I was a kid and I would do things. I would think things up and do them. Uh, sometimes I would tell people about them. I would repeat them in different contexts, different circumstances. A few years later, 1966, I met George Machunas. George invited me to join Fluxus. And if you hear feet running around in the background, that's my, my dog being a little bit being a little bit noisy as he gets ready to go go out for a walk with with my wife. And she's grabbing a couple dog snacks to take with them uh, but back to back to George um, when I met George and started to work in Fluxus I told him about the things that I'd been doing and he liked the ideas this is why he invited me to participate and he said you have to write these down and he explained the tradition of event scores to me. So that's when I started to write them down. I'd been doing them for 10 years, hadn't thought of them as art, just things that I was doing. And then I started to write them down. And sometimes I I think about them as art. Uh, other times, <laughs> not sure, not sure at all. Uh, thanks to George, I've always had warm feelings for Lithuania. Uh, George introduced me to Jonas Mekas, and uh, through the mail, he introduced me to Vitautas Landsbergis. We used to correspond from time to time. And for the opening of the exhibition, the gallery asked me to make a videotape. Uh, this is my third videotape ever. Uh, the first videotape that I made lasted 30 seconds. Nam Jun Pik produced it for a video festival in 1971. My second videotape lasted 60 seconds. And this was produced by Jack Massing only about a week ago, uh, which expanded my video horizons by nearly three times. And now this is my third tape. I'm not sure how long it will last, but once again, Jack is producing it. Um, Jack Massing is one half of the art guys. Unfortunately, the other half, Michael Galbraith, passed away recently. Um, Michael and Jack and I have known each other for a long time. I, I don't even know how long anymore. Um, and they, they organized one of my favorite shows ever, which was an earlier version, uh, an exhibition of event scores. They had a gallery in a broom closet called Matsu O. And I did one of the exhibitions in the broom closet gallery. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to Jack right now. Hello, everyone. I hope you have a great opening. I wish I could be there. I wish I could be with Ken. And I really appreciate Ken inviting me to help with this video. And I guess, Ken, now it's um, 
it's it's 93 events <laughs> thank you yeah so um i'll talk just a little bit about about the events as you'll see when you look at the scores uh, some things change over time there's one event i'm always interested to see again because it um it's not the same any longer even if you do it the same way we used to get into the car and we take a telephone with us, the old-fashioned telephone handset with the rotary dial or later with the punch button dial and pull up next to somebody on a street corner, roll the window down and hand the phone out to them and say, it's for you, which of course in the 1960s was completely astonishing and shocking to people. Uh, some people thought it was funny. Other people were terrified. But today, if you walked up to somebody and handed them a telephone and said, it's for you, nobody would even think twice. If they were puzzled, they'd just want to know, wow, that's interesting, but how did you know where I am? Other things don't change at all. Um, one of my favorite events is titled The Three Ages of Man. The score is three containers stand on an old table. A container with four legs or points touching the table contains powdered milk. A container with a solid base and one large external point contains sugar. A container with three legs or points contains salt. This is based on the Oedipus myth when the Sphinx asks Oedipus to solve a riddle. Uh, the Sphinx had been basically blocking the road to Thebes and the Sphinx did not permit anyone to pass who couldn't answer the riddle and nobody would ever have been ever able to answer the riddle so the Sphinx would kill them. She asked Oedipus this riddle, what walks on four legs at dawn, two legs at noontime, and three legs at sunset? And Oedipus answered, a man, a man crawls on four legs as a baby at the start of his life. He stands on two legs when he's a man in the middle of his life and he walks with the aid of a cane or a crutch when he's old. And this was the answer. The Sphinx killed herself. Oedipus went on to Thebes and became a king. This story has been going around for nearly as long as um, human beings have been telling tales and writing them. It's the beginning or the, the prequel to Sophocles' great play, Oedipus Rex. And it's been told, this was in the, I guess it was the 4th or 5th century BC, and it's been told ever since. But some things are yet to come. The, one of the last events in the exhibition is called Decapitalism. A store where people can bring things and leave them. No one can buy anything. Now, my big idea is that I'd like to sell this to Jeff Bezos for the next incarnation of Amazon. Right now, people can buy everything and anything on Amazon. 
in the next version of Amazon, I'd like to see an Amazon where you can only give everything away. No one can buy anything. For now, I think that'll, at least until I can get Jeff Bezos to buy the idea from me, that'll be it. I want to thank you so much for coming to this exhibition. I hope you have a good time. Thanks.